Hey, and welcome back. A few months ago, in April, I had the opportunity to record on the latest release for a jazz singer I work with quite regularly, Erin Krebs. When she approached me about being part of this project, she made it clear we were going to do this in the spirit of a lot of classic jazz albums, recording in one room together, and attempting to get a whole album's worth of material done in just one session. Although I was a bit apprehensive we'd be able to get through all of this in just one night, I was excited for the challenge and decided to film the process and bring you along for the ride. So before I could make my way out the door for the day, I needed to pack a few things up to bring with me. The house kit at this studio is really more of a rock set, so I knew I'd be bringing my own drums for this session. I decided on bringing my Gretsch New Classic Bop Kit as it seemed to be the best fit for this specific music. And go ahead and roast me in the comments for not throwing these in cases, but as I'm pretty careful with my drums and not headed too far away, I saved myself the hassle. My main cymbals, snare, and hardware were already in the car because I actually had a gig the night before with the same singer I was recording for. And again, I know I'm gonna get blasted in the comments for this, but I always lock my car and I live in a nice safe area for this sort of thing. I also made sure to pack an extra snare, ride cymbal, and a few dampening accessories just to have a few sonic options once we got in the room and started playing. And of course, I packed some equipment to not only film this vlog, but some footage for Aaron to use as promo for the album release. So a little before 4 p.m., it was time to make the trip up to Appleton, which is about 20 to 30 minutes away from me here in Oshkosh. There's not a huge list of commercial studios in this region, but of the five or six I can think of, Rock Garden Studios is probably at the top of the list. It's been around for a long time, and the owner, Mark Goldie, has built a really great space with amazing equipment, like a vintage Angus console, and all the top-level mics and outboard gear you'd expect from more nationally renowned studios. Like I mentioned before, we actually played a gig the night before, which was a great chance to get most of this band together and get a feel for the arrangements and songs a bit. But I play with Aaron all the time, so most of these tunes were some that I'd been playing regularly over the last few years. In this kind of setting, where we don't have dedicated rehearsals leading up to a recording session, organization is key, and Aaron made sure to email us with not only the charts, but a rough layout of songs, arrangements, solos, and anything else we'd need to get through the day. Out of the 11 songs that would be included on this project, two of them didn't require the whole band and were only tracked as a duo before I arrived. But of the nine songs that include full rhythm section, there's a nice mix of jazz standards and original music. I arrived at the studio around 4.30 and began the process of hauling in all of my equipment and getting set up. As you can see, the studio has a large tracking room with really high ceilings, and in addition, they also have a full grand piano, which is such a luxury, especially in recording genres like jazz. If I'm being honest, I'm probably most comfortable recording in smaller rooms with a tighter sound and more isolation between the instruments, but in the spirit of trying to capture the sound and vibe of old jazz records from the 50s and 60s, Doing it in a space like this, with mostly analog equipment, really simulates the way it would have been done then. After I was finished setting up my drums, I was able to work with the engineer Mark to get placement and levels sounding good, and then we were quickly able to move on to tracking. Before I get into the songs and sharing some of the tracking footage, let me just take a second to introduce each musician on this project. By now you'd already be familiar with the vocalist and leader of this recording, Aaron Krebs, but in addition, this album also featured Paul Zuckerman on the piano and Jerry Sparkman on the bass. And then on select tracks, you'll also hear from Aaron's partner, Jeff Johnston on the guitar, as well as Eric Kappa on the saxophone. The first tune we recorded was an original bossa nova tune called Breaking Through. Aaron gave the band a lot of input on crafting these arrangements, and I really liked the way we varied up the style a bit on the outro. You can count on me Something tells me you might be breaking through Breaking through the next tune-up was another original called Spread a Little Sunshine. It's a laid-back swing, and although I'm on brushes for the whole tune, I got the chance to do a little trading fours on this one.
somebody else's shoes. So how are we to know? After getting these first two songs done, we took a little break to eat some dinner, and Aaron was kind enough to prepare an entire taco bar spread. This was absolutely amazing, but I think we all knew that we probably needed to pace ourselves a bit in terms of not stuffing ourselves full of tacos before even getting through a third of this material we needed to record. So after wrapping up round one of tacos, we moved on to another Latin song called The Way Home. You might notice a little extra percussion on this track, but I'll address that a little later. Something so old hat seems so new. You're on your way home. You see detour. You gotta go another way. Even though that road seems so long, just stay on your path and you'll get home. After we finished this third song, our sax player Eric showed up as he'd be on the rest of these tracks for the night. And the first song up with him was the classic jazz standard, Bye Bye Blackbird. So we will make my bed and light the light Cause I'll arrive so late tonight Blackbird Yes, Blackbird Blackbird Bye 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 After wrapping up Bye Bye Blackbird, we moved on to another original swing tune called Hard On Your Sleeve, as well as another well-known standard, Blue Skies. Singing a song, nothing but bluebirds all day long. The next tune up, After You've Gone, is another jazz standard, but was probably one of the more challenging tunes for me throughout the whole session. It starts off pretty relaxed in a slower 12 8 feel, but after the opening verse, the arrangement quickly transitions into a real up tempo bebop style. I love the arrangement, and although every drummer loves playing fast, it wears on you pretty quickly after two to three takes. So luckily we were able to get this one done in just a couple of tries. You leave me, can you see my tears? Listen while I say After you're gone, and let me cry After you're gone, there's no denying You'll feel blue you feel sad you miss the dearest pal you've ever had There'll come a time Now don't forget it There'll come a time When you'll regret it Someday When you grow lonely After wrapping that tune up, I suggested we take a quick 10 minute breather so I could try to regain a little bit of my arm strength. In most of the session work I do, we typically go back into the control room and listen to takes between every few, but with the deadline we're working with today, we really didn't have a lot of time to waste between takes, so this was a nice chance to go back and listen to a few songs and get a sense for what our playing sounded like played back on recording. But with only two songs left to tackle, I think we were all ready to get back to tracking and finish up our session. The next song up was another original called Little Bird and is a pretty upbeat samba. 
I love how the ending of this song came together after playing a bit and negotiating a few ideas back and forth between the band. Life is short, don't waste it, go on, see all that you can. If you get stuck here, don't you worry, cause you got friends on land. With that song complete, we could move on to our final song for the evening, which was a funky groove take on an old jazz standard, The Man I Love. For this tune, I pulled out these quesadilla cloths from Big Fat Snare Drum, and I think the muffled dead tone was perfect for this track. Still I'm sure to meet him one day, maybe Tuesday will be my good news day. We'll build a little home Just made for two From which I never roam Who would, would you? And with that song complete, we were able to call this session a wrap around 10 p.m. I didn't waste too much time before I started tearing down and packing up, but of course, we all made one final trip over to the taco bar before clearing out. I'm impressed we were able to get all of these tunes done in one day, but in my experience tracking jazz versus other styles, you typically get your best take in the first few, so if you're doing more than three or four takes in a row of a single song, you can start to get a diminishing return on your playing, trying to be spontaneous and creative while doing the same thing over and over and over again. And with our approach for this project being in the same room, recording all together with minimal isolation, there really wasn't an option to do things like punch in for a mistake or retrack a specific solo or something. So with that being the case, it helped move the whole process along pretty quickly and efficiently. I made it home around 11 p.m. and moved everything out of my car and into my storage space where I keep most of my gigging gear, but I decided to call it a night after that and waited until the next morning to go ahead and put things away where they truly belong and get my equipment set up back in my own studio. This probably feels like the natural point where this video might end, but as I mentioned a little earlier, and after speaking with the producer and Aaron last night, we decided it might be worthwhile to add some percussion overdubs on a few of the Latin tunes. So within the next week, I got an email from Mark with some of the stems from the session to overdub some percussion from my home studio. After I had everything loaded into my digital audio workstation, I began the process with doing congas for both tunes. When I'm doing overdubs like this, I know there's a chance that a layer or two will not be used, but I try to start with the part that I think will be most likely to be used in terms of layers, because then I can let that part influence the next, so I can play with some perspective of the overall mix of layers at the end. After congas, I moved on to Wiro for the cha-cha tune, and to me, this is the quintessential aux sound for this style. Unfortunately, I couldn't just record four bars and loop it, because we never played to a click, and to play a nice consistent Wiro pattern for an extended period of time always wears me out. So I copped this one over a few passes. Next up was some cowbell, or for all the traditional salsa band players, bongo bell. After that, I added some shaker for good measure and could move on to the second, more upbeat samba tune. On this one, in addition to the congas I already recorded, I started with some more bongo bell playing and then shifted over to the go go bells. These go go bells took me forever to get down, but honestly, this is probably my absolute favorite percussion instrument when I listen to Latin music, and I think they are criminally underrated. Before calling it a wrap, I decided to add some bongos because traditionally the cowbell part would be played by the bongo player and be a substitute on louder, more aggressive sections with the actual bongo drums. And if that's news to you, now you probably have a better idea where the term bongo bell comes from. Like I said before, I don't expect them to use every layer in the final mix, but it's nice to provide some options for the producer and artist and let them be able to hear some variety by having all of it in there for them. All in all, I spent maybe one to two hours working on the percussion for both these tracks, but after that, it was finally time for me to call this project a wrap. After waiting about a month, I was finally able to get the masters back and take a listen, and it's always fun to see where these songs go from being raw tracks all the way to fully produced, mixed, and mastered songs. 
I made a vlog from another recording session last year where I spent five days in the studio tracking a jazz album, and it was certainly a much different experience than this album, even though the genre and general principles remain the same. I think that just shows the ability to approach a project like this in a variety of ways and find success. If you want to hear the final result of this album, I'll drop links to the full album in the description below as it becomes available. I'd love to hear what you think about this process of recording an album in one day, so leave a comment down below to make your opinion heard. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. And until next time, thanks.